Hello, it's Martin from Wisely Automotive. I recently had an opportunity to test drive the Renault Megane E-Tech at the electric forecourt in Braintree. So despite it only being a short 45 minute test drive, I thought I would bring you along to show you around the car and give you the first driving impressions, because it is now starting to get delivered to customers in the UK. I did not have much time to set up, so please excuse the poor video quality, but hopefully you find the content interesting. Once you jump in, even though the screens are completely on and this car runs on the Android automotive platform, so I will get to that in just a second because that's quite important, you still need to press the power button to fire up the car. And then it's already in the instrument cluster. The key for board, the key card is pretty much identical to the Zoe. Interestingly, this is the Techno specification, so not the launch edition, and it will probably be the car which most people end up buying here in the UK. Despite being on the higher end of the spectrum, it only has the smaller landscape oriented screen, so not the full portrait one, but it does not really matter that much because it still runs on Android Automotive. As I said, that's quite a big deal because unlike most car infotainment systems, and especially the previous Renault ones, the system reacts immediately. You still do have Apple CarPlay and traditional Android Auto if you want to use those. But the biggest feature is that the guidance is handled through Google Maps. And if I do search and, for example, say I want to drive to Glasgow, you see how instant this is. The system will plan me a route and it knows that I need multiple charges through each destination and it can plan those for me just like a Tesla would through superchargers. That's exactly what we like to see. And if I press start, head southwest. It gives me estimated state of charge at destination. And I can also have the map in the instrument cluster. And I can have both of those running at the same time. My original concern was that with the smaller screen, the processor would be different and would not be able to handle some of the features. But that's definitely not the case. So good to see. And if you want to, you can use the view button to cycle through different views. So this is the map view, a more minimalist view and one which also shows you more of the driver assistant system information, so whether the car recognizes the lane or any vehicles ahead. Enough talking though, let's get to the test drive. The loop takes me around the area on a good mixture of roads. Starting at low speeds, the car creeps by default. I was later told that if you press the auto hold button, that should supposedly disable creep, but I haven't had a chance to try that, so I can't comment on how it's implemented. Either way, the motor control is really refined, Definitely one step better than the second generation Zoe, which I was already quite impressed by, especially compared to the first generation Zoe. If you want to see a video covering the Zoe, I will leave that linked up in the top right hand corner. By the way, just for the record, no, the screens don't flicker in the real world, it's only on camera. Joining the dual carriageway is the first test of the power delivery and I'm quite interested to see how the Megane does. It's a little bit unusual, because despite being built on a fully ground up EV architecture, the motor is housed in the front, powering the front wheels. However, it accelerates without fuss regardless, even with a bit of steering lock applied. The next big question is the brakes, as the car features blended brakes to enable the region adjustment on the steering wheel through the paddles. But if you already have some EV experience, you probably know that these can vary quite significantly vehicle to vehicle. They are definitely more confident and reactive than the Zoe. Almost to the point of being too touchy, but you would definitely get used to them. Unlike the VW cars, especially with the ID3 being the direct competitor to this on the MEB platform, the Megane features disc brakes all round. The area around the Gritzer forecourt is full of roundabouts, so that presents a perfect test for handling. The suspension is definitely soft, but the body handling is well controlled was likely helped by the low center of gravity due to the battery in the floor, just like with most EVs. The car can in fact carry decent speed without much drama or abrupt power cuts by the traction control system, even through uneven surfaces. Please appreciate, I do not have the confidence to throw around a car which I've driven for less than three miles on unfamiliar roads, but the first impressions are very good. Providing good comfort and while a bit more isolated and not as darty as the i3, it is definitely confident and well balanced overall. I reach an empty stretch of road with the national speed limit and no traffic around, so I slow down to a zero to experience the zero to 60 run. The power eases in from standstill, probably to avoid torque steer, but the actual time is still very respectable at under eight seconds. 
it would be very interesting to know how the handling and acceleration are affected by slippery surfaces once it starts raining though. I enjoyed the remaining bit of the country road driving before I hop back onto the dual carriageways. Here I try out the driver assistance features. This techno trim I am driving includes adaptive cruise control with lane centering on top of the usual lane departure warning, autonomous emergency braking and so on. I remove my hands from the steering wheel temporarily to demonstrate that the car is indeed steering itself. And from the limited time I had with the system, I would say the acceleration and steering input are very smooth, but I had a drift off center a little bit on a couple of occasions. And that's the end of the drive. As you can see, state of charge in percentage and miles displayed at the same time, so we'd like to see that. All of the adaptive cruise control is controlled on the left hand side of the steering wheel. The right hand side is for some of the most frequent media controls, including a button for the Google Assistant. Or you can just use the hot word, like for example, hey Google, cancel guidance. Stopping navigation. Fantastic, that's nice and quick. A multi-sense button, just a button, not a rotary selector like on the Porsche Taycan, but if you press it, it then cycles through the different modes. So I've tried out Comfort, Eco and Sport. Not much of a difference, to be honest. The interesting thing is that we do have paddle shifters for different stages of region. So I believe I need to be in drive for that. The gear selector is a stalk on the right hand side of the steering column. And there is an indication of the level of region. And if I use the left paddle to increase that, you can see that the arrows fill in or disappear from the little battery icon. So that's coasting. And if I use the left one, that's full region. Just so you can compare in full region mode, it's almost as aggressive as the i3, but definitely not there yet. So the i3 or something like a Tesla Model 3, I would say still feel a bit stronger. The inside is nice and spacious, soft touch, fabric material on the dashboard, a bit more scratchy further down, but still much better than anything you would find on the Zoe. Nice Alcantara inserts in the door cards and ambient lighting, which changes depending on which mode you are in. And fantastic, a very quick way of disabling lane keep assist. So if you find it annoying on country roads, which are simply too narrow, you can just press that and lane keeping is deactivated. I don't know whether the car remembers that between restarts. What definitely resets is the region setting and you can also activate auto hold right here and activate the parking brake but that comes on automatically as you put the car into park by pressing the top of the drive stalk. Quite an interesting solution from Renault here because if you've got the drive stalk, the wiper stalk and the multimedia stalk which is not very typical for Renault on the right hand side of the steering column as well so this area is a bit crowded whereas on the left hand side you only have the lights that's a bit of a shame that it is not more evenly distributed, but not really a big deal. These are standard rocker switches, and if we look here, the touch surface only recognizes where your finger is, and then you need to actually press the button to initiate the function. So if I just brush against them, nothing happens. So I think many people will be glad to know that. Likewise, air conditioning options, the core ones like temperature and fan speed, are present as these toggle buttons. And in all honesty, these actually feel better quality than the ones on Mercedes products. So well done, Renault. And we've got a wireless charger on this trim level for your phone right underneath the screen. No sunroof, I'm afraid, and with dark headlining. So it may feel a tiny bit claustrophobic because the windows are quite small to make the car look a bit more aggressive from the outside. But the seats with this bright fabric, which is made from recycled materials, really helps brighten up the cabin. So overall comfort and everyday driving would not be too much of a concern. The rearward visibility is almost non-existent, but the car does come with a reversing mm -hmm. camera. So if I flick that on, there it comes. The resolution is a bit low, but at least it gives you the full guidance lines and it also has uh, parking sensors. What I wanted to know is how the space in the back looks like, because, because the car is actually quite compact. I have I have our i3 right over there, so I will try to compare them side by side. But I've got the driving position set to how I would drive on a long journey. So let's see the back. Two-way adjustable lumbar, so you can't move it up and down, but you can inflate or deflate the support for your back. Okay, not as spacious as the ID3, but definitely have enough legroom. I do sit a bit high up, you can definitely tell that the battery is in the floor 
but no big deal and I can do even a longer journey in here. Seats are nice and soft and featuring the same fabric as in the front and because of the bespoke EV architecture a nice flat floor here. And that's what it looks like next to the i3 so width wise probably a tiny bit wider I can overlay the dimensions on the screen. I try to park them equally in terms of height I would say it is in fact a little bit lower and yet they are aligned pretty well on the back so even though in pictures the Megane looks like a big SUV it's actually quite a compact crossover and just like other Reynolds it does have comfort access so when I get close with the key card the door handles in the front pop out so it's very nice and easy to get in I forgot to mention a couple of other things so let me go through them in no particular order right now focusing mostly on the interior as you can read the specs yourself to access the boot you need to get a button which will probably get quite dirty from road grime but once you're in it's a good size quite deep which unfortunately means a big loading lip but there's cable storage under the false floor and 60 40 split folding seats if you need even more space the rear lights feature this very unique 3d effect really showing that Renault is trying to go upmarket with the e-tech. Before I set off I made sure to reset the trip computer and once I got back the result is that I averaged just above 3 miles per kilowatt hour on the 11 mile run. I would say that's pretty good considering that AC was on and the spirited driving style. The quality of the sound system is difficult to get across on a video and we cannot play copyrighted music anyways but even without the top level Harman Kardon system it sounds totally fine to me. The glove box is finally not limited by the location of the fuse box in the UK so you get a full sized glove box just like the rest of Europe. In terms of driver comfort the steering wheel is fully adjustable and even heated on the standard trim and so are the front seats which is completely opposite to the Zoe. However you supposedly only get manual AC on the base trim level and there is no heat pump for the UK market at all as of right now. Whilst I'm on the standard trip level there is a bit of conflicting information between the website and the browser but it seems like Google services are not included. Does that mean it runs a different version of this infotainment software or does it just use Reynolds maps instead of Google maps? We will need to wait to see how that exactly works. Of course very important something you want to check in person is the quality of materials especially as you are paying almost £40,000 for a Renault in this case. I'm happy to say it's all good especially compared to the competition with some hard plastics in the lower section of the dashboard but padded armrests and nice mixture of textures making the cabin feel quite premium with carpeted door pockets both front and back. In fact the back is only slightly lower end than the front which is what we like to see but isn't true for all manufacturers. The rear seats also get air conditioning vents mounted in the middle and two USB-C ports which is nice to see on a compact car but no folding armrest in the middle. The wheels feature a square setup meaning the same wheel size on the front and back riding on 215 45 sized Goodyear tires. The CCS port is located in the front left wing. The slow charging AC section is protected by a weather tight seal so very elegantly only the CCS bit requires the additional rubber plug. And last but not least the headlights feature full LED technology which is to be expected in 2022 and despite not being matrix they should be able to change the beam shape based on the driving conditions. Honestly it's impressive how far the underlying technology has come to enable such super slim designs these days. And I think that's about it. There are still many questions to be answered especially regarding the base specification, what the car is going to be like to live with and so on but I suppose only time will tell. We will have many more photos from the event on our Facebook page so I will leave the album linked below in the video description and as always thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.